Hello everyone, welcome to Tactica Imperialis and to today's video. Today is going to be another of my Tactica Tutorialis lesson videos, but you'll notice this isn't Monday morning and there's no live premiere going on. This lesson is what I'm calling an aside. This is a lesson where we're going to teach something useful, but what we're learning is actually non-examinable. The skills that we're picking up are gonna be done through the lens of non-examinable materials and we're talking about something that whilst the basics you need to know, what we're doing, you don't. So today's lesson is all about the Suvat equations, which if you're an A-level physicist, you will know inside out and backwards. And if you're doing GCSE science and physics, you'll be getting to know at least some of them at the moment. Or if you've seen your forces and motion topic, you'll definitely have got to meet a few of them. These are very old and very powerful equations of motion. They can be used to describe classically at least, the motion of almost any object, and they're exceptionally powerful. But you may never have wondered where they came from, because some people just assume that science pops up out of the ether and just suddenly we know what to do. That's not the case. People have to put work in from a baseline and build on what they know, maybe making assumptions along the way, until they arrive at a solution and an explanation for what they can see. And that's exactly what happens with the Suvat equations and almost every famous equation in physics. They are derived from somewhere, from something, from a principle, from the work of another. And I want to show some of that off today. And the skills that we're going to do, and I'll talk about this more at the end, are very transferable. What we're going to do with the equations in order to derive them is stuff you'll see over and over and over again, especially if you take physics higher. So, Armed with nothing but my trusty whiteboard, the first principles of motion, and my velocity time graph, I am going to derive the Suvat equations. You do not need to make religious notes and copy all of this down. You can make any notes you wish, because of course this is non-examinable. There is a short exercise that you can do, but I'm not going to give you the solutions. You can look them up online because it's very, very quick. Aside from that, it's up to you. I think there's some really useful material for you to take down here, but I'm not going to force you because, as I say, this stuff is not on your exam. So, without further ado, let's get to it. We're going to show off the Suvat equations of what they are first, we're going to define what we're using, and then we're going to derive them. Let's begin. So, these are the four equations that, according to the A-level specification for physics, you need to know. There is a fifth, which is a variance on this third one, but we'll talk about that one later. They are V equals U plus AT. S equals a half U plus V T. S equals U T plus a half A T squared. And V squared equals U squared plus 2 A S. And we're going to derive them starting from nothing but first principles and a velocity time graph. That's how we're going to do it. And by the end of the video, you should be able to see how all of these work. These are not examinable things you need to be able to do, but I think it is very, very insightful to know where they came from. But before we start, we need to do something that you might not think about in physics because we see this all the time, but we need to define our variables because we know what these symbols mean, but in a proper derivation, someone might know what, not know what our notation is. So we need to be clear about what our notation actually means. What do those symbols mean? Well, let's write them down. So S, we're going to work in vectors because one of our parameters is a vector, so we're going to make everything a vector. We're going to say S is our displacement, which is in meters rather than distance. U is going to be our initial velocity, so our starting velocity. Remember, not speed, which is in meters per second, or ms to the minus 1, if you prefer to write in power notation. V is going to be the final velocity. also in meters per second. A, we're going to define as our acceleration, which is in meters per second squared. And acceleration is always a vector, hence why we're making everything a vector. And T is our one scalar parameter, which is time, which is, of course, measured in seconds. And I've also made it spell suit that, because of course I did. So those are our variables and that is what we're going to use throughout the video. I'm not going to write that down again, just wanted to make sure you'd seen exactly how I was defining things. So let's get started and have a look at our velocity time graph. 
So when you're doing a VT graph, there are sort of two things you'll be asked to work out quite often. And the first of those is the gradient. And I've got a straight section here to take the gradient of that section of the line. As I think most of you will know, we draw a triangle. And I'm going to define this time period as delta t and this change in velocity as delta v. I'm going to define the initial velocity of this section as u and the final velocity of this section as v to be consistent with my notation. So by definition, an equation that we know, we know that the acceleration a is equal to the change in velocity divided by the time period because we know that acceleration is the gradient of a VT graph, so it is velocity change divided by time. Now let's get that into our notation. So delta V is the difference between this value here and this value here. So delta V is V minus U, and we can use delta T, but I'm just going to call it T. It means exactly the same thing. It's a kind of arbitrary pick. So therefore, A is equal to V minus U all over t, the time period over that of that velocity change. So if I times by t, I get a t is v minus u, move the u across and then swap the sides just for clarity, we get v equals u plus a t. Boom, one suvat derived using nothing but that graph. Now, the second part of this is that you'll be asked to work out is the area underneath the graph, or you might say the total distance traveled. But whilst that is normally done from the graph, you would get that to be that S equals VT or something like that. Or the area underneath would roughly be distance is velocity multiplied by time. And that comes from the original equation of speed, the average speed, AVG, is equal to the distance, the total distance, divided by the time. So that's where that comes from. But notice that I've said average here. So if I'm taking an average, I'm effectively taking a mean. And when I take a mean, what do I do? I add up all the values I know, and I divide by the amount of parameters that I've got. Well, if I look at my VT graph, I'm looking at this region here in the whole graph in general, the only region I know anything about, and the only speeds I know are U and V. So my average or my mean is equal to U plus V, and then divide by how many I've got, one, two, U plus V over two. And that is now equal to S over T. Now I know there's a bit of swapping over of terminology. It's not a perfectly clean derivation, but if I now multiply by T and move this over two to be a half separately, I get S, go swap the sides of the equation, is equal to a half. We'll put U plus V in a bracket because this is equivalent, if I just write it down, U plus V over two is a half U plus V, means the same thing. U plus V and then we multiply through by t. And that's our second suvat. It's a little bit of a messier derivation, but that's how we get there. And now all we have to do is start plugging some stuff in and everything's just going to drop out. And I'll show you what I mean now with the third suvat that we're going to derive. Now you might've noticed that some of the suvats lack just one of the parameters and I'll write them down and I'll point it out again. So we've so far derived V equals U plus A T. Notice one parameter is missing. We've got V, U, A, and T, but we're missing S. S equals a half U plus V T. <coughs> Notice S, U, V, T, no A. Well, now we want to see what happens if we get rid of U or we get rid of V and we get rid of T and try and create equations without them. So the first one we're going to do, since we've already got it derived for us, is V. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a substitution. This is kind of like if you've done A-level maths, solving simultaneous equations. 
But that's not a term you need to know, it's just a method you might have seen before. So what we're going to do is we're going to substitute V equals U plus AT into S equals a half U plus VT to eliminate V. So we don't want V to be in that equation, but we know what V looks like. We know that in its simpler form from the first SUVAT, V equals U plus AT. So we're going to plug in, this is part of a simpler non-scientific term, we plug in U plus AT in place of V. And that gives us this, S equals a half bracket, U plus, now instead of V, I'm going to write U plus AT because I've plugged that in instead. U plus AT multiplied out by T. Now I just need to tidy up this bracket a bit. So that's quite easy. In fact, I won't even make it a second line because I've got U plus U plus AT. So the two U's go together and I get 2U plus AT. 2U plus AT inside that bracket, all multiplied by a half t. Now let's multiply it out, which equals u plus a half a t multiplied by t, because it only goes to multiply that by the half, equals u t plus a half a t squared. S equals u t plus a half a t squared, derived because I got rid of v from u plus v in there. That's all I had to do. Now, I'm not going to do it in for the video for the sake of brevity, because it's not one you need to know from the four SUVATs. But I, the challenge, I'd like you to rearrange this equation to eliminate u. So get this equation into u equals dot, 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 and plug that in place of u into s equals a half u plus vt, and see what you can get for the equation of S, T, V, and A, and see what you can work out. I'm not gonna do it here, but that's your little challenge if you want it. Now, the last one is actually doing exactly the same thing, but instead of eliminating V, we've done, you've done U, I've done V, now we need to get rid of T. And this one's gonna get messy. So, first off, we need to rearrange this equation B equals u plus at to be in terms of t. So t equals, in fact, I'll do it in a different color just so that we can see exactly what I'm doing. So t equals, we need to subtract u, v minus u, and then divide by a. v minus u over a is equal to t. Now let's put that in here. So s equals a half u plus v, v minus u over a. Now I'm going to do a few tricks here. First off, I'm going to change this to put the half and the a together and call it 1 over 2a. That's the first thing I'm going to do. That just tidies it up a bit. The second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to swap these two over because it's an addition. One plus one, or sorry, one plus two is equal to two plus one. So u plus v is equal to v plus u. So I'm going to do that, make that v plus u. And now there's actually a very quick bit of maths that some of you might have already spotted. So if I have got quadratically a plus b, a minus b, when I multiply out two brackets, what I get is a squared plus ab minus AB minus B squared by doing first, outer, inner, last. I've got those the wrong way around, but you multiply out and you get that. Those two cancel each other out, so you're left with A squared minus B squared. That's all you're left with. So we can do that same trick here. So let's multiply it out. So S equals one over two A bracket V squared plus uv minus uv, cancel out, minus u squared. I think you can see where this is going now. So I'm going to multiply across by 2a. 2as equals v squared minus u squared. 
Then let's add u squared and swap the sides. v squared equals u squared plus 2as. Boom. Fourth subat derived. That one is the messiest. It's the, got the most mathematical nonsense going on because that's an awkward rearrange compared to the others. And that, whilst you can do it in long form like this, is a bit more complicated to sort out. But it drops out with v squared equals u squared plus 2as. And that is the four Suvat equations that you need to know derived. And there you have it. I know I went very, very quickly, but that is the Suvat equations, some of the most powerful equations of motion in all of modern physics, derived. Now, the history of them is very interesting. I know I've gone through the mathematics very fast, but the history is very interesting. So um, this equation, um, ut plus a half at squared, uh, half at squared, plus ut, was actually derived by Galileo. Um, he derived it for a falling object, so this bit actually didn't exist, and acceleration was equal to gravity, but he derived this back in 15-something. And then it was the work, I believe, of Newton, Leibniz, uh, Descartes, and others who would create the other Suvats going forward. It's a really interesting little bit of history, even though I don't know it all that well. I quite enjoyed looking into it when I was preparing for this video. So, with all that said, take your time, go back through this video if you need to, because I know I went very quickly. For GCSE students in particular, you might not have seen some of those equations before, and you may not have used all of these ideas before, but especially at A level and at degree, if you're someone who's interested in pursuing it further, then this idea, rearranging an equation to create a different variable and plugging that variable into another equation, is something we do all the time. It is exceptionally powerful and it's very, very common. I can think of an equation toward the end of A-level physics, the ideal gas equation, whose derivation goes on for, let's just say, a while. And it requires a lot of this trickery of rearranging, substituting, making assumptions. A lot of stuff happens very, very fast to make it drop out. But it works. And we do it a lot, as I say, at degree. So, go back through the video, take down any of the derivations you're interested in. They're not normally examinable, even at A-level, but I think it's worth knowing, because I like enjoying where the history of my physics comes from. People have a tendency to say, science is a land of absolutes, and it's not. It's really not. As I explained in my Newton's Laws video, science is not an absolute. Science is ever-evolving and ever-changing, and all the things we know have to come from somewhere. And now you've seen where they've come from. So, well, thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this informative and entertaining. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you have any requests, please do let me know. I always like to know what lessons you'd like me to do. But for now, thank you for watching Tactica Imperialis. And this has been a brief Tactica Tutorialis aside, if you will, on the derivation of the SUVAT equations. Thank you very much for watching. And goodbye.